going to be Prince Andrew. Let's see what we can find out. If you like the video, please do like it. And um, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later, I suppose. Don't do that. And uh, But listen, thank you very, very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So don't you want to know if Prince Andrew is going to face some sort of justice for what we all believe he probably did with that uh, girl when she was underage? I kind of want to know. So uh, we'll look into it. Let's ask the cards. So we're going to talk about, uh, he used to be called Randy Andy when he was a young man. And then uh, while he was uh, supposedly representing the British government, he was Air Miles Andy for all the Air Miles that he used. But uh, I'm going to run through a little bit of his history and then we'll update to see if Andrew is going to finally face some consequences for what he's uh, accused of doing uh, with underage women under the uh, tutelage of uh, Jeffrey Epstein. So here's, here's what I know about uh, Prince Andrew, or what Wiki knows, I should say. So in 1960, uh, Prince Andrew was, uh, my uh, computer has just loaded up with a bunch of messages, so let me take a minute to get rid of those. So in 1960, Prince Andrew was born in the Belgian suite of Buckingham Palace on February 19th. He's the third child and the second son of Queen Elizabeth II. We all know that. At Buckingham Palace, he was looked after by a governess responsible for his early uh, education. Later, he was sent to Heatherton uh, School near Ascot in Berkshire. Um, Berkshire. Um, in 1973, the 13-year-old Prince Edward Gordonston in northern Scotland. And in 1977, Prince Andrew spent six months participating in an exchange program to Lakefield College School in Canada. In 1979, at 19 years old of age, he left Gordonston um, and enrolled at the Royal Naval College of Flight and served in the Royal Navy as a helicopter pilot instructor, later also as the captain of a warship during the Falklands War. Now, in 1981, 21-year-old now, Andrew, met and dated American actress and photographer Ku uh, Stark. And you know what? I'm not going to talk a lot about Ku Stark. I've got a few uh, lines here, but I think we all know that. I'll throw her picture in and uh, just uh, suffice it to say that he had a, a, an affair with an actress, and uh, they're still friends today. Today. So that covers from 1982 through 1986. That's the Ku Stark stuff. And then um, now we'll go into um, Prince Andrew and uh, Ferguson, uh, uh, Ferguson, Sarah Ferguson. Now in 1985, uh, Prince Andrew, who had known Sarah Ferguson uh, since childhood, became reacquainted uh, with her at uh, Royal Ascot. And in 1986, 26-year-old Andrew married Sarah Ferguson at Westminster Abbey and was created Duke of York. They have two daughters. Everybody knows Princesses uh, Beatrice and Eugenie. Um, but then in 1992, the couple separated amicably. In 1996, after 10 years, they divorced and shared custody of their daughters. Uh, Sarah continued to live at Andrew's home in Sunning Hill Park. And uh, in 1997, Andrew became godfather to actress Ku Starks, remember her, daughter. And then in 2004, he moved to Royal Lodge, where Prince Philip uh, was uh, in his last days. Uh, his lease uh, was for 90, 75 years. But then after that, you know, Prince Andrew moved in. So I mean, Prince Philip moved in, so I don't know. Uh, the Crown Estate is the landlord, and there's no annual, annual uh, tenancy charge. So, uh, 2007, Sarah had purchased Dolphin House, which was a mansion directly beside the Royal Lodge. And then in 2008, a fire at Dolphin House resulted in her moving into Royal Lodge. What is it with Royal Lodge? Okay, in 2008, the Sunday Times reported that for the Duke of York's public roles, he received 436000 pounds 2008 to cover expenses expenses he served as britain's special representative for international trade and investment for 10 years 
And then in 2010, the Kazakhstan president's uh, billionaire son-in-law paid uh, Andrew, uh, well, uh, his representatives, he, they, they paid Andrew's representatives one, uh, $15 million for his Surrey mansion, uh, Sunning Hill Park, which was uh, $3 million over what they were asking for it at the time. And, uh, but that was paid via offshore companies. 2010, Andrew spent 620,000 pounds as, have I been saying pounds because all this is pounds, uh, as a trade envoy, including 150,000 pounds on hotels, food, and hospitality, and 465,000 pounds on travel. Jeez. Okay, then in uh, 2010, Sarah was secretly filmed receiving $40,000, uh, okay, as a cash down payment for plans that later, uh, Andrew, the, a cash down payment for plans that Andrew later would meet the donor to pass on useful top-level business contacts for 500,000 pounds. 2011, he's called Air Miles Andy, like I said. There's a lot of stuff that goes on through 2012, which involves uh, Sarah Ferguson's uh, disgrace for that deal. Um, Swiss Italian police investigated a trust that was all connected to Andrew and Sunny Hill Man Mansion purchase. And then, um, in tw I'm going to skip ahead to 2015, because that's when Andrew faced accusations over his connection with Jeffrey Epstein, um, and go back to Coup Stark, she came to his defense. But then in 2016, the Daily Mail says that uh, Andrew had brokered a deal for a Greek and Swiss consortium to secure $385 million contract to build water and sewage networks in two of Kazakhstan's largest cities. And as a British trade envoy, Andrew stood to gain four million pounds payment in commission. So he's been making money off the government. Uh, 2019, Andrew succeeded to patron of the Fire, uh, Royal Art Commission Trust. And then in 2019, at 59 years old, his public duties were suspended for the for sale of a future following, and trust me, this is done, uh, following a television interview concerned with the sexual abuse and connections to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. We all saw that. Epstein, we all saw that. 2020, Andrew permanently resigned from all public roles. U.S. authorities had filed a mutual legal assistance request to the U.K. to formally interrogate Andrew. Andrew was not invited to major celebrations of his father's 100th birthday and was included as little as possible. The Duke of York, as of uh, 2020, receives 249,000 pounds annually from the Queen. And now it looks like the British uh, police are waiting to see how American authorities uh, try to enforce this um, issue on Prince Andrew before they make a move. So and he's holed up somewhere. Let's see what's going on with Prince Andrew. Okay, so this Sola Busca Tarot uh, are great cards. These are museum quality, and uh, these are uh, in the era of the Italian Renaissance. So love these cards, Los Carabio, amazing box that come in, look at that. And uh, you really feel like you got a great gift if you got these. The book is pretty cool too, but it's not in color, but it's a lot of interesting story. I mean, you have to be interested in reading this to kind of get through the book, but there's some good tips on divination in there too. The cards um, are great. I mean, they're slick, they're big. Um, so that's something that makes them a little bit hard to use. But, um, you know, these date back from around, like I said, the mid to late 1700s, I guess. And they're an assemblage of different uh, uh, examples of cards from a couple different uh, museum pieces, I think, or private collections. And then they put them together to make this whole 78 card stack. But, I mean, look, I mean, they're gorgeous. You see them? How beautiful they are and colorful. It's just hard to use them. Um, you just have to commit to uh, how are you going to uh, work out your divination. So... Really love these cards. I'm so glad I got them. Solabuska Tarot. And, um, but honestly, I don't use them that often because they're a little tricky to use. Gosh, and look what a mess I made trying to do this. You know, this is a good way to mix the cards up. And uh, if you want somebody, if you're doing a reading and you want to kind of get their energy into the cards, I mean, look how much you have to handle them to get them back together. So that's all good uh, for me as far as getting the uh, cards uh, mixed up with some good uh, juju. So it seemed to me that this Sola Busca Tarot would be really good to use for this Andrew issue because honestly this is an old worldly deck and it seems like what Andrew is doing is the same old worldly thing of abusing his power in one way or the other. It's a, a rich 
uh, person bored getting into trouble. That's just how I see it. You know, uh, I wonder if Andrew had sought some way outside of the government to make a living, if his life wouldn't be more um, occupied and not leave so much of spare time. But then even other rich folks uh, who have nothing whatsoever to do with monarchy have gotten themselves embroiled in this uh, situation too. So, you know, that might not be a fair comparison, but uh, just a thought, you know, just a thought. I want to warn you too that, you know, these cards can be a little cryptic sometimes. And uh, so I may uh, have to use my cheat sheet a couple times just to help me uh, determine uh, what a card is. I do that because I, you know, don't want to, t you know, tell you the, an incorrect uh, divination for a card. Um, although I have to say that I pretty much feel that if I've said something uh, while I have, after, after I've meditated and after I've studied the issue, um, I kind of feel like it was meant to be said. And I have to just kind of leave it at that. And all of this, let's face it, it's all just me, some intuitive guy uh, in the United States, uh, throwing some cards on a situation, I'm not, a situation I'm not particularly connected to. Look, these cards don't want to get together today. So... This is the Soul of Buscatero, and we're going to say, Andrew, will there ever be, you know, real justice? Will you ever, you know, I sometimes you say, well, if he was innocent, he'd want to speak to the court. But, you know, I don't think that's always the case. I don't know that uh, the court systems anywhere in the world, you know, always come out uh in a just manner. You know, let's remember, this is a human court. This isn't some sort of a... Uh, um, godly uh, decision or a, a godly judgment that's coming down. These are, even though they try not to be, these are biased human courts. So, my goodness, these cards, give me a break. Why does that card not want to lay down? What are you? So you are, let me count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of swords, and the seven of swords is theft, deceit. <laughs> it seems, does seem appropriate. So we'll lay these out, and I'll just show you right now, I have these cheat sheet uh, cards here that help me if I forget the divinations, but those, these are pretty much the divinations that I would use anyway, that, I would, that I've uh, committed to my memory. So let's start out with the three cards for this question, Prince Andrew, will you ever face justice? Okay, one, two, three. And, I, and you know, the cards know that I'm speaking about justice in this um, underage sex scandal uh, situation that, my goodness, he's gotten himself into. The first card for that uh, is the Ten of Swords. Oh, my gosh. So the Ten of Swords is the absolute end of a thing, okay? Um, I don't know how to look at that yet until we put some other cards down, because this could be, the, no, this is the end of the issue, or it could be that this issue will be the end of him. So Ten of Swords, the absolute end of a situation. The next card for that is the Four of Wands, and, um, or is this the Four of Wands? Yep, this is the Four of Wands. So the Four of Wands are celebrations of a sort. Huh, that's interesting. End of an issue and celebrations. And then the last card of this is going to be the one, two, three, four, five of Pentacles being left out in the cold. Being left out in the cold. That's very interesting. So I think this is speaking to, um, this is directly about Prince Andrew, that this there's going to be an end to the situation. There are going to be uh, celebrations as to the way this is end, and it's going to end up leaving him out in the cold. Hmm, that's interesting. That sounds like uh, he may actually face justice. So let's get a little deeper into that. So Andrew facing justice. What does that mean that Andrew will face justice, if that's what those cards are telling us? Does it mean that, um, that he'll be uh, shunned by the British public and the royal family? Does it mean that uh, he will face some sort of a, a, a conviction that involves some sort of a, a jail time? I can't imagine that that's the case. Um, what sort of justice is Andrew going to face in just three cards? What justice will Andrew face? One, two, and three. What sort of justice do we think Andrew's going to face here? Okay. First card right off the bat is, uh, what are you? So this is the Knight of Pentacles. So this Knight of Pentacles is telling me, you know, the Knight is the fellow who's going to fight for his worth in the Royal Suite. What's the next card in this one? This is the four, but four of what? Four 
that card isn't clear to me at all. The four. Uh, and I know that it's a four because it's here, but I don't know if it's a four of what. It's not a four of pentacles. It's not a four of swords. It's not a four of something else. Um, I think uh, if this were the um, Major Arcana, this would be the Emperor, but it's not that. So what is this before? Oh, let's put the next card down and take a look at this. And so this card is uh, the Queen, and this is the Queen of Cups. So this is the Queen of Cups right here. We've got a huge cup here. We have the Queen here. The Queen of Cups is in, full, in charge of emotions. Oh, my goodness. You know what the justice is going to... This is um, justice for um, the emotional situation that he's put uh, that uh, woman through. Very interesting. This four, without pulling out the Sola Busca uh, book, um, this is a, a knight of some sort uh, defending his his himself. And... Um, this is could actually be, now that I think about it, an Ace of Pentacles. So this is a great big offer of value. This is a knight defending that value. But this is the Queen of Cups who is in charge of her emotional uh, well-being. And I think one more card I'm going to pull for that to see if this means that, is, does this mean that she is going to get paid? And I think she probably is. Is uh, Virginia Giffrey, I think is her name, going to be paid? Ah, and this is a chariot. Uh, is this a chariot? No, this is a knight of Pentacles. Oh, yeah. So the Knight of Pentacles is coming forth with a great big offer. Yep. So this is what's going to happen here. The justice he's going to face is going to be in the uh, face of a, uh, of a fine, in the, interpreted by a fine. Will Prince Andrew rejoin the royal family? That's what I want to know. Is Prince Andrew going to rejoin the royal family, um, you know, or is he just going to become more and more obscure? Let's say it that way. Is Prince Andrew just going to become more and more obscure? That's what I want to know. Prince Andrew, are you just going to become more and more obscure? Let's see. I think that's kind of what I'm getting here. I'm going to do this in oh, another three cards. Prince Andrew are just going to become more and more obscure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is the, uh, yep, this is the Ten of Swords again. So this is the end of an issue. Okay, this is the Seven of Coins. Wow. And the Seven of Coins, let me double check my meaning of that. Um, yep. Efforts, uh, the right timing, patience, growth. So this will come in time. This seven of coins is looking at a situation and wondering, you know, have I done this correctly? Is there more I should have done? So it's going to be the end. This issue is what's going to be the end of uh, Prince Andrew's um, uh, participation in any major way in the royal family. And it, it's and it's even going to bring about the question, was enough done? And the final, oh my goodness, is, is heartbreak. Yeah. So that's what we've got there. This uh, Three of Swords is just telling us that, yep, this is going to be the end. Um, it also can, this can also talk to, speak to us of uh, anything happening in the future. Um, yeah, no, this is, this is it for him and participation in the royal family. And I would just want to turn it on, a, on its head for a minute and ask about Virginia. I want to ask about Virginia Giffrey. Virginia Giffrey, is she in this just for the money? Was she a willing participant, even though she... I guess it doesn't matter, because if you're underage, you're underage. Even if you're willing, you don't have the... Uh, you're not the of the age to make that decision. Okay? So, ah, that's an interesting one. Is this going to be satisfactory for her? For her? Just three cards. first card is uh, the Page of Swords. So the Page of Swords is the very weakest of the cord cards, and he's bringing forth truth, justice, rules, uh, honor even, and uh, this page is singing a tune. So I think she's going to be very happy with the way this uh, comes out. This is the uh, Four of, of Swords. The Four of Swords, and I have to remind myself, because my mind is just racing right now, the Four of Swords is Rejuvenation, Meditation, Contemplation, 
yep, it seems uh, that's going to be fine for her. And then the final card, again, is that seven of coins, but she's always going to wonder if she did enough, if there was, if there couldn't be more. And I think she's going to be wondering if there's not more money on the table. That's very interesting because that could uh, spark her trying to maybe bring him back for more money at some other time. Interesting. And just the fact that it, that it says that uh, tells me that um, she may have felt, I don't want to say it, well, that, that's where we're at. That's where we're at with that. So, those are the cards. So, that's a little update on Prince Andrew and this uh, underage abuse, scam, avoidance, whatever you want to call it. That's what we got. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.